Welcome to the Week 6 Ham and Egg pregame show. Uh, my name is Drew Forbes. Marcus Anthony. Derek Black. We are switching up what we're doing this week in a, in a very big way. Uh, we are actually recording this in our backyard. Uh, we did describe to, or we decided to go ahead and scrap the video concept because it was just awkward and we would rather just put out a good podcast than focus on the shit that we're really bad at right now, which is video. So we're going to bring back the video concept uh, later. But for now, we're just going to concentrate on audio. And I do want to say that uh, this is going to be the first week that we do post this uh, to SoundCloud. So this is going to be eventually available on iTunes um, and, and multiple platforms. So we'll post something about that on our site. But um, it's really exciting. Uh, if you do hear some background, uh, I do live very close to 275 in downtown St. Petersburg. So uh, if you hear like a really loud motorcycle, don't be alarmed. Um, <laughs> But uh, I'm doing really good today. How, how are you guys doing? How, how's your week going? Uh, awesome. I skipped work, uh, golfed all day. Uh, can't complain about that on a Friday. Fuck yeah. Hopefully you're not friends with anybody from your work <laughs> and on Facebook. <laughs> I'm still sick, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doing good. Uh, excited for the weekend, for sure. Hell yeah, man. Another another weekend of, of what should be uh, some exciting games on tap, which is what we're about to talk, to, talk about. But uh, we are definitely changing up the format quite a bit this week. Um, like I said, we're outside. I'm actually smoking a cigar right now uh, that I bought from a place called uh, House of Pipes and Cigars. It might be the saltiest cigar place I've ever fucking seen in my life. Um, it's on uh, MLK and like 26th Street. Go check it out if you want to see like seven Florida men gathered in one room. Um, I'm telling you, like, what what was the saltiness level in that in that room when was, we walked in? It was pretty high. Did you see the guy that looked like Elvis? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I think as we were leaving, people were complaining about the experience of buying a car without test driving it. Yep. Oh my God, I can't believe it. I was yeah. like, okay, priorities. It was some. It, there was some boomer, some salty boomer action in there. It was. It was beautiful. I think Marcus, you would thrive in that place. You'd, you'd be emperor of that place. They declare you. <laughs> I think I'll have to check it out next week because I, I could go for a good stogie. <laughs> So I'm smoking a cigar during this. It's actually uh, it was highly recommended by the very weird fellow that that. Uh, I, sold it to me it's a corby so um never heard of that shit but uh i'll tell you how it is so far it's so good i know i just lit it up but so far so good so uh we're gonna kick this thing off with a bang uh this is how we're gonna start all of our podcasts going forward uh, i'm gonna ask derek and marcus a question that they have no idea uh what i'm gonna ask and i'm gonna try and make the question as uncomfortable as possible My and, and 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 just just so everyone understands i also have to answer the question so uh, there is a double-edged sword to me making the question uncomfortable. But uh, the three of us are actually in one of the most intense fantasy football leagues probably in existence. Um, we'll touch on this on other pods, but uh, the last place in our, in, our, in our league every year has to dress up like a uh, gay unicorn. Uh, and it just I, it's clearly it's exactly like what it sounds. It's a rainbow unicorn. Um, and we take him out to the worst dive bar in the city that we're in uh, for a draft weekend. And um, so it's a really intense draft uh, and a really intense league as, as a whole. But my question for you guys for, for the week is, if you had to bang anybody from our, from our fantasy league, who would it be and why? And you have to hit both points. Uh, I'm going with Goose. Uh, he's got a great personality. He's, Does. He's, he's very pleasant to be around. He's very honest, loyal, and caring. And very he, easy to talk to. And he has a great ass. Great body. Yeah. Great body. Great body. Great Swimmer's body. body. Tall, oh, lean, tight. strong. Tight, yes. That, Derek? That was pretty easy for me. That, that, so, so was not even a close call or like Goose was at the top of your mind? Um, it, He's always at the top of my mind. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that was pretty easy for me. Would he be on top as well? Um, would... would, 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 would you. I think it depends on what I'm drinking or you know ingesting, but you know, I, but I think there's a little give and take there. I think he's a, a a giver, but I think he's a pleaser. I think he wants to please whoever he's with, so I think he'll give and take just so so uh, the romance is still there. Oh, absolutely, and and honestly, I, I've always thought of you as being very bear-like, so I have no question of what role you would play in that relationship. <laughs> That's great, <laughs> Derek. Um, man, I'm glad I, I went second. I had some time to think because I didn't have that one <laughs> locked and loaded like Marcus. Um, I, I would say probably Trevor. Trevor? Yeah. Okay. Why? Yeah. He's a little wire, little gamey. Little gamey, a little wiry. I think he's a cheap date, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I think right. that would be good. You know, get a couple of drinks and, 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 and you know, he'd be down for anything. Watch the mm -hmm. show. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, 
I don't know. I think we have we have similar personal uh, lives experiences. I, I think we understand relationships the same way. Sure. Um, yeah, I think he'd be my pick. Definitely. So, so for you, it's not just sexual. You you're also looking to connect to Dar- uh, Trevor on like a, a hey, if personal I'm, level. If I'm in for this, I'm in for it. You yeah, know what I, I mean, I love the thought process. So Derek is is he's not just considering you know the sex part, which obviously for us is probably the most uncomfortable. He's also considering like coexisting day to day with Trevor. Yeah. I really like the thought that went into that. Um, for me, this was tough, man. I got I got a couple candidates like like Renee's like he, he seems like a guy that like is really well like groomed. So he'd Endowed. probably be like the cleanest in the yeah. sack. And I feel like you know out, out of out of the the fourteen of us, we're a really dirty bunch. So I think Renee is like the most refined of us and probably most chick like. Let, 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 let's let's be real. One hundred percent. But for me. I've always been a, a, a boob guy. I, I, I've, I've always kind of been attracted to like uh, like uh, bigger women. I like a little. I like like not not like big, but like you know not like really petite girls. Uh, I'm going piling. Okay. He's Bad he's boy. he's thick with like 47 C's. Yeah. Uh, the guy's got it going on. So killer um, dance moves too. It's killer dance moves, and he's just a great guy. Like I could see us like spooning yeah. and like watching like uh, a great Netflix movie on a Saturday night, and I just feel like I'd feel really safe in his arms. Yeah. So uh, that's the weird question of the week, and that's going to be coming every week, and it's going to get weirder and weirder, I promise you. But um, let's, let's, let's get right to the NFL. So we're five weeks in, gentlemen. I mean, technically we're like 5.05 weeks in uh, with the Patriots playing last night. But uh, five weeks in, Marcus, what's your take so far on the season? Um, confused um, as a whole. Um, divisions are very interesting to me. A lot of teams are just not where I anticipated them to be, um, whether it's in a good fashion or poor fashion. Right. Like, for example, I uh, can't harp on it enough. I'm so disappointed in the Falcons. Um, but there's other teams that have really impressed me, like, you know, the Detroit Lions. They're playing really good football. Um, and the whole North is so surprising to me. Green Bay's playing really good defense. Um, and both Chicago and Minnesota, while they do have solid defenses, are just so inconsistent, <laughs> truthfully, on both sides of the ball. Oh, yeah. Um, so, for me, that division is so confusing. But there's just so many teams yeah. throughout throughout the entire league that I, I was just I was shocked at how um, how they're performing on a you know week ba- weekly basis. Yep. I got some thoughts on that. But, Derek, what, what about you? Yeah. So, I, I would say outside of – even though it's been a little closer than I thought, um, there's not as, as many clear-cut favorites as I thought there was going to be entering the season. Outside of San Diego, I think the divisions are really lining up the way I kind of thought they would before the season. Uh, Patriots are going to win their division. Saints probably going to win the South the way it looks. Uh, Green Bay, kind of a three-way tie there. I think a lot of people saw that. Um, outside of San Diego, I, I think it's, it's really you know what we expected. Yeah. But just kind of a note, just NFL in general, the officiating is terrible. Huh, yeah. Like almost, uh, it's it's almost unwatchable. I think pass interference reviewing uh, is just a joke. It's I think they opened a can of worms they weren't prepared for, and they're not actually reversing any calls, even when it's so blatant that that there was or was not pass interference on a given play. They're sticking with the call on the field. Uh, so at that point, like, what's what's the point? No, I, I saw an interesting stat on that, and uh, I'm gonna definitely get the numbers wrong, but. Um, the overturns are, I think it's like one for 31 or one for 32. Yeah. It's just a remarkably low percentage. Um, so how do, you, do you think the interference replay is kind of failing as a whole right now? 100%. Yeah. I think it's, it's complicating things and giving fans a gripe. Like, well, why is this even a thing if we're not actually using it? Um, but I think what we're seeing in all sports right now is just these games and these athletes are so specialized. They're so fast. They're so powerful. Um and they know how to work the refs a little bit to a degree. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that play uh, last night, Edelman, or, or it was two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I think, leans into the receiver a little bit. Veteran move. He knows you know, the call's there. He knows he can buy a call. P- ball's probably a little overthrown and gets a pass interference mm-hmm. call. Right. Uh, you can play the refs a little bit. They're looking for certain things. But I think the speed of the game is to the point where, with the technology we have, being able to see it slowed down, multiple angles, all these different – got to remember, one human being is getting one view at – real life speed they're going to make mistakes yeah. our ability as fans to review that and notice the mistakes is higher than it's ever been sure you see it in all sports you see it in hockey you see it in basketball you see it in football yep um you get you know a camera angle that the guy who made the call never got it's it human error is, is an element of of any um you know subjective anything yeah. and it and in the end it, it's all subjective i mean you're you're like you said it's all about perspective and you know what 
Uh, bitches like the New Orleans Saints uh, that have ruined the 2019, and, and, and I, I don't, look at my notes, guys. I, I don't want you to think that we, we planned this out uh, without, we don't coordinate our notes. And exactly what Derek just touched on is, is my, my take, which is the fucking NFL sucks this year. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's bad. It's, there, there, there have been some great games, but it's been great games despite the format. Yeah. Um, bad calls, horrible calls. And it's not just that they're bad. They're ticky tacky calls. Like I feel like it's become like this NBA type game where the refs are like it's 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 like the two teams and then the refs. Like which one of those three influences are going to win out the game? And you don't want to see that. Like it's it it like you said, it, it's become unwatchable. Kind of like the NBA where they're flopping all over the place. You know, yep. watch watch European soccer and just <laughs> it just drives me nuts. Like they, they're flopping all over because they know that the ref is such a huge element and the the steps that they've taken have really just been absurd and it's all because of one bitchy ass fan base yeah. which by the way glided to the Super Bowl on some horribly like controversial you know plays and obviously bounty gate but it's not just that like there's some other things rumors out there what they were doing they're flat out cheating yeah. so if any fan base has no reason to complain it's the bitch ass saints and i mean, i could not mean that more and obviously you guys and know i'm a vikings fan so i think we're seeing individual refs too treat it differently i think they're getting you know the mandate from the league which probably changes every week depending on what fans are saying i'm sure the league puts down a memo to the refs every single week Mm-hmm. Um, that's you know probably con- con- contradicting from week to week, and they're probably confused. And you're seeing some refs overreact by throwing flags on everything. Yeah. And you're seeing some who are afraid to throw a, re- a flag and be controversial, and they're just keeping it in their pocket. Yeah. But game to game, you know, crew to crew, I, I, I don't think there's even crew consistency. <laughs> you throw it on the left sideline, you might get a flag. Yeah, you throw right. it on the right sideline, you're not getting it. Well, so we, I think we got to move on from the topic. Yeah. But I, I do. Want, I want to ask Marcus, uh, how much of this, like, we're, we're talking about the bad NFL product. How much of this, why does Roger Goodell weirdly get a pass? He's ridiculously overpaid. Um, I think that the NFL product has, without question, gotten worse under under his watch. Like, how much does Ro- Roger Goodell have to do with how bad the NFL product is? First of all, do you like Roger Goodell? Like, what are your thoughts on Roger Goodell? Um, I, I'm not a fan of him. Um, and I think that when you're seeing, like, the replay, they're they're – too quick to jump and bend to conform to what everyone's bitching about. Yes. Not not just the team, the crowd, but the fans. Yeah. So they're like, okay, well, we're making all of our money off the fans, um, locally, internationally, everywhere. Okay, let's really take in their input. But most of the fans don't really know too sh- like nothing, not a fucking damn thing about football. Right. Um, and then when you start conforming, what is really truthfully a beautiful game. Um, physical as hell, but beautiful. Um, and you start meshing it to a million different viewpoints, it's just going to alter everything. And, and I think that it, he kind of needs to take a stand. And me personally, um, you know, you know, touching on basketball, I'm not really a basketball fan that much. Um, but Adam Silver is a fuck. He's a he's fantastic. And just the way he, he is, the way he approaches it, the way he talks, the way he presents himself, the way he handles uh, dilemmas, uh, situations. It, he every every time I listen to him. Yeah. Uh, it's it's something actually uh, productive. Like he's not he's not caving to bend to people. Um, right. uh, he, he's not afraid to say, "Hey, we're figuring it out." Yeah. Like we obviously don't have the right answer. We're figuring it out. But with Goodell, as long as he's making the owners money, I think he's safe. Dude, uh, fucking, um, I I always said Marcus has some of the best takes that there are out there, and that's so great. Uh, the the comparison to the NBA is is, is flawless. Uh, if you want to, if you want to, if if you think that just because he's a commissioner, he's getting he's getting flack. Look at the job that Adam Silver has done with with the NBA, and you will see that it doesn't have to be this way. So let's go ahead and move on. So we this has been in, this has been on a lot of sites. Uh, so we're certainly not the first to touch on it, but we do just got to go ahead and admire this because the 2017 running back class. And folks, I'm going to go ahead and just run down this list, and then I want to get Marcus and Derek's take on this um, because it's absolutely insane. Uh, you know, there's always debates like what's the best quarterback class. Uh, most people go uh, the class with Elway, Marino. Kelly yeah. uh, as the greatest, and but that's even up for debate uh, in recent years. There's been some really great quarterback classes, but I think that the debate for best running back class is not only almost over, but it's not even close. Yeah. And, and we're talking about a class that was just two years ago, which is the 2017 running back class. And listen to what I'm about to tell you, folks. This is the class in order that they were selected. Leonard Fournette, Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon, Alvin Kamara, Kareem Hunt, James Conner, Tariq Cohen, Marlon Mack, Aaron Jones, Chris Carson, 
and and that is just drafted. Now let's move on to the undrafted from that same class. Austin Eckler and Matt Breda. So, out of the 13, I count 10 starting for their team this week. Um, Marcus, just give us some uh, give us some hyperbole about that draft class. Um, it, obviously, you, you don't really have a good idea of how draft class is going to perform because I think uh, what was that John Ross draft, draft class was supposed to be one of those the same draft class it was supposed to be one of the best receiving ever and it, it was probably one of the most dog shit ones ever. Um, um, a lot of the, the Treble draft class. The Treble that was 2016. Okay, so 20, so, yeah, so 20, yeah. 2016. Johnson and Ross and yeah, yeah and they're all going to fall out. And then you know we knew that there were going to be some really good running backs coming out of there. Um, you know everyone had different expectations for some of the different uh, guys, but some of the the dynamic playmakers as you go into the second rounds, third rounds, fourth round. A lot of the guys you unless you're really deep into college football, you really had no idea who they were or are. Um, and if you want to tell me you know who Tariq Cohen was before he started tearing it up in the NFL, I'm going to call you a liar flat out. <laughs> so, Derek, your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a great class. Um, I, I think you look at the top of it, you know, I think people knew that Fournette and, and McCaffrey are going to be great, and, and you know, they really, I think, have both panned out. I think Fournette, even though he started ended last year a little slow, started this year a little slow, he looks better. Uh, he's had a couple big games uh, this year already. So I think he's going to go the same way they do as far as offensive line play. Um, but you look, again, the, the deeper, kind of the deeper cut, uh, Connor, Mack, uh, Cohen, isn't, he's, he's kind of a, a weird flex utility weapon, but still very productive. And then even the undrafted guys. I think Matt Breda is one of the fastest players in the league. Uh, in that system right now is, is absolutely thriving. Chris Carson at 249, that's all I'm going to end it at. That is absolutely absurd. Yeah. So let's go ahead and, uh, and move on. So uh, two most disappointing uh, teams of the season by far, and it's, it's actually really embarrassing. I know we all have some strong thoughts on this. Let's touch on this very quickly. Uh, Chargers-Falcons, how bad do those teams suck? And um, I, what were your expectations of them going into the season? Honestly, it's it actually a, a lower percentage chance, but it's a potential Super Bowl matchup. Um, like I said, I was high on the Falcons to win the South. Me too. Um, and the way that the Chargers meshed and uh, by the end of the season, and really both teams not losing any pieces, I, I, th- I thought they were going to, you know, obviously contend in the West um, and make a push again to, uh, you know, like I said, a potential Super Bowl matchup. So Here. I think I think you have two versions of of how teams can disappoint you and how teams can underperform. Uh, you have the Falcons who are just underachieving. I think it's bad coaching. They gave up a, uh, last week a perfect passer rating to Deshaun Watson, almost 600 yards of total offense. Um, Arthur Blank is is probably lying to us, saying that Dan Quinn is safe. If he's not lying lying to us, he's completely naive. But you know that's a guy that also was on the sideline for that collapse because he was already ready to celebrate that Super Bowl. So I can tell you, unfortunately, because I spent a lot of time in Atlanta with my with my uh, permanent job, which is uh, they that is not a lie. I've, I, I have the pulse on Atlanta. They love Dan Quinn, and you guys are idiots. I, I know I know we have some Atlanta <laughs> followers. You guys are fools. Like, you, you're going to let this guy crash your franchise just because he is a really stand-up guy. He gives really good speeches. So I think people are, like, really – you cannot deny what is happening since Kyle Shanahan left. That should have been your head coach. Um, obviously, it's awkward to, you know, in a successful year to fi- – you don't know, fire your head coach and right. probably use your bull. Like, I know, I know it's awkward, but it was clear now, in hindsight – who the stud was in that uh, uh, 2016 Atlanta, yeah. Atlanta Falcons Super yeah. Bowl team. And uh, Dan Quinn should be gone tomorrow. Um, I'm, I'm about to give some some crazy tw- – Dirk Cotter, what the fuck were you thinking, Atlanta? This is, this, is a, this is a guy that was just absolute trash for the Bucks. Almost ruined Jameis Winston, one of the greatest college products that we've ever seen at the quarterback level. I mean, just almost just straight up ruined the guy in his development. They currently they are twentieth in points scored, eleventh in total yards, and think about and this is on offense. Think about their think about those weapons. They have Matt Ryan, who's dog shit. He's just Kirk Cousins in a different uniform. Um, they have one of the best, if not the best, wide receiver in the league in Julio Jones. They have one of the best complimentary receivers in Alabama product and super freak. Uh, I'm blanking on his Alabama. name right now. And 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 they by the way they have a really really good third wide receiver in Mohamed Sanu. So what is going on? They have a, they have a strong tight end. Uh, they have a, a guy who's shown that he can be competent in the past, and Devontae Freeman. And then they have a pretty good backup in Ido Smith. Like what is going on? And their defense has so much talent. They're currently 31st in points allowed, so they're like Miami level. 
and and rank 23rd in yards. It, it's an absolute embarrassment what the Falcons are doing. Yeah. I think the Chargers bounce back, but Atlanta is a joke. Well, and, and that's also very surprising because Dan Quinn's always known as a defensive, defensive guy. guy yeah. And uh, but you know, Cutter kind of reminds me of his uh, Dave Wanstead, who bounced around from yeah. uh, the, do- the Dolphins. for no reason. The Dolphins right. Why is he getting pick? jobs? Right. <laughs> and he was terrible, and he yeah. he under he underachieved everything everywhere he went, and his teams were dog shit. And then he would get a promotion somewhere else. Can yeah. can can I give you who I think is a better comparison? And, and we're excluding the Dallas years, but I'm gonna go Norv Turner. Yeah. Think about North Turner. Like, he, it was always like, why does this guy keep getting a head coaching job? He's a fucking terrible old head coach. He's a very average offensive coordinator. Yeah. Um, and so, anyways, uh, let, let, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, New England played the Giants last last night. At times, it looked like it would could be a really exciting game. Um, I, I, I'm just going to give my takes, and I'm going to pass it on. Uh, Tom Brady looks average right now. Um, he, he had some plays. Remember when he fumbled and he picked it up and he almost threw a completion? That was ridiculous. That's that's like vintage Tom Brady heads up play. But their defense is exceptional. That offense is sputtering with a lot of weapons. Very bizarre. Uh, the defense is shut down. Don't get me wrong. But I got to tell you, my biggest takeaway from last night, and even as much as he fucked up, I'm, I'm just going to say it right now. I was wrong about Daniel Jones. The guy is going to be a good NFL quarterback. Marcus, what was your take on that game last night? Uh... I was I was laughing just from the gambling aspect, um, with New England driving down and you know throwing a ball over at four minutes left to cover an, an impressive seventeen and a half spread. Um, <laughs> I know you're pissed about that. I saw quite a few drunken texts from me that night. <laughs> um, but true, it's kind of funny to watch because for a while there in Brady's prime, uh, that offense was so good and that defense was just terrible, and mm-hmm. he he carried it. So now you're kind of seeing as he's getting older. He's getting a little more gun shy. His arm strength isn't there. Uh, he's never really been agile or mobile, but he, he can dance in a pocket better than everyone. Um, but as long as that defense can play close to the level they are, uh, they, you know they're going to obviously make a good run uh, either way. Uh, but I'm 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 interested to see how teams keep playing them because if if you're able to get pressure on them up the gut, you can almost almost completely shut down that offense. Completely agree, and uh, we're, I'm going to pass it on to Derek, who actually is a Patriots fan, if you didn't know, uh, but he's actually one of the most uh, interesting guys in terms of Patriots fan, because he's not like another guy on our page, uh, Jim. He is uh, actually very objective when it comes to the Patriots, so he's not really a homer, so I do trust his takes. Derek, what was your take on last night's game? Yeah, so I think the biggest issue starts up front. Notoriously, you know, New England can piece together a good cumulative offensive line with, you know, with spare sure. parts. Um, but they're really stressed on that right now. So three guys on the OR, three guys on the injury report. Um, Marshall Newhouse is their starting left tackle. They acquired him in a in a trade, and he's been in the building for a month. He'll be a Pro Bowler this year, for right? Us. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that's something that usually snaps together midseason. Yeah. Um, uh, Dante Scarnecchia is, is the best offensive line coach maybe in the history of the league, uh, and that's not hyperbole. Nope. Um, he, he's just phenomenal, and I think he can piece it together. They have two centers starting right now. One's playing left guard. And, and Joe Thune. Uh so there's some missing pieces, but my, my fear is wide receiver. They need to add either bring back Antonio <laughs> Brown, uh, make a trade, and for AJ Green, I know they're rumored to AJ Green and, and Stephon Diggs. They, they need to bring somebody in because as much as I was excited to see Gunnar Oleski make the team as a specialist, uh, he played a lot of snaps last night uh, in the slot, and I don't love that look. Uh, if you're two and three receiver, Gunnar Oleski and uh, Jacoby Myers, you're you're not in a good situation. They've ended the game with one tight end on the roster, healthy. Um, they only have two tight ends on the roster total. So they're going to have to make some improvements on offense, but I do think the defense carries them through a weak division. They're going to take advantage of that like they sure. always do. Probably still get a first-round bye just because of, of a weaker schedule. And I think as much as you know, to the chagrin of everybody, they're going to piece it together by the time it matters. Yep. Yes or no, is Grant coming back this year? <laughs> he keeps... Yes going, no? I, yes. Right. Yes. Dude, it, I, I, I personally found Grunk's uh, commentary to be so freaking awkward. Um, <laughs> I know it was his first thing, but, like, that guy is just – The squirrel he, shit was, he's, he's, was unbelievable. He's, he's, a tro- he's, a, he's a bro trying to be professional, and it's so funny. By the way, I love Gronkowski. I fucking hate the Patriots with every bit of my – with every cell in my body. But I do not I love, love Gronk. Gronkowski. All right, so let, let's, let's continue on. So we're going to launch into our picks. We're actually already 24 minutes in. So let's go ahead and uh, let's rumble through this, but I do want to get to all this. Uh, Derek so last week was 3-3. Three and three. He's 14-10 and 10 on the season. Our leader, Marcus, was 3-3 three and three last week. He is 15-9 on the season. Uh, so they're both doing really well. I'm doing horse shit. I got to tell you, uh, the circumstances involving our format 
uh, has really uh, kind of fucked me. And I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not complaining. I'm gonna bounce back. But I was two and four, and I'm 11 and 13 on the season. So really bad times for me. But I want to remind everyone about our format. Uh, the games are randomly picked. We pick six games, so four that are randomly drawn, and then two that are primetime games. So the Sunday night and the Monday night games. Uh, so that is the format, and we are not going to touch on every game because not all these games are interesting. So we're gonna, just going to hit the games that are interesting. We're also going to hit some other games that are interesting. So let's dive right into this thing. Detroit at Green Bay. Green Bay is favored by four and a half. Marcus, who's your pick and why? Uh, Detroit. They're playing sound football all around, um, and four and a half is too good for me not to be interested in. They almost beat the Chiefs. Uh, their only slip-up was tying the Cardinals, who I like, but Detroit plus four and a half. Yeah, I'm the same way. Um, I, I don't really necessarily know who's going to win this one, but I think it's a field goal game either way. Uh, so that four and a half makes it too enticing not to, to take Detroit. I love it. Uh, overconfidence is always Aaron Rodgers' downfall, yeah. and he is so fucking overconfident. You, yeah. you see it, You see some of his comments of the Cowboys game. He, apparently when he's walking off field, he goes, I love this place. I've never lost here, and he <laughs> hasn't. He's literally never lost in Dallas. Um and I know a lot of people like him. I can't like him. I love him I, so oh. much. I think I think he's I think he's hilarious. Yeah. I, I I think he's a, a weirdly genius troll, but but whatever. Um, I fucking hate Green Bay. I am taking Detroit. They're playing great football. They 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 found a way to shut down um, Patrick Mahomes, so they can find a way to shut down anyone. Anyway. Um, uh, uh, what why? Uh, Matt Patricia yeah. has been absolutely phenomenal. He looked very dicey last year, I'm not going to lie, but he clearly has the personnel he wants in now. I think Detroit is a scary team going yeah. forward. I think that there's a good chance they – I think it's a good money line uh, game uh, th- yeah. this week just to just to take Detroit on the outright win. I don't know if I'd go that bold, but I'm definitely taking Detroit with the, with the points. Uh, so, yeah. So let's move on. Uh, so th- this is a game that is not on our on, – it's not going to be counted on a record, but we do want to touch on it. Houston at Kansas City, the game of the week. It's not even close. We have uh, two quarterbacks draft from the same class uh, that are just looking like they are going to be the products of the NFL, and they're both great guys. I can't, I can't tell you how much I, I think about both these guys. But Houston at Kansas City, so it's in Arrowhead. Uh, obviously, Kansas City dropped one to Indianapolis last week. They are favored by four. Marcus, what's your pick and why? Um, <laughs> this one's tough. I'm going to go Houston for the cover. Uh, solely on thinking that Patrick Mahomes is not fully healthy with his ankle. Um, Houston did start to click He's last week. definitely not, by the way. Um, and, and that makes all the difference in the world. Their defense is still a little spotty, but their offense clicked um, kind of what you were expecting out of them last week. Um, and Kansas City showing some weaknesses. That's two games in a row that, you know, they lost one. They almost lost another. So um, give, me, give, me, uh, give me the Texans plus the points. Yeah. So uh, I like uh, Houston. If uh, Healthy Will Fuller is, is – Scary, scary, scary for a number two receiver. Uh, I like everything they're doing on offense. I think this is the new – I haven't decided uh, if this is the new Brady Manning, if this is the new Brady Breeze, or, or you know, who's going to play what role here. Uh, I think Simeon sneaks into the best you know, in the next ten years. But I think this is your premier, one of your premier quarterback matchups for the next ten years. Um, I, I think I like Houston to cover, uh, if not outright win. Uh, Deshaun Watson plays big in big games. Kansas City looks vulnerable, and more than I like the points, I love the over here. I think it's gonna be a shootout. Uh, so, who are you taking, Kansas City? I'm yeah. taking Houston. Are you taking Houston? I'm, I'm taking Kansas City. Um, I, I uh, what's Mahomes is definitely dinged up, and it's re- very concerning. But I did see even after he rolled his ankle, he had this really awesome scramble. Um, the guy's not human until you can show me that he is. I don't believe that he is. Um, I love Andy Reid. Uh, w- that guy bounces back from losses. If, if only you could bounce back from a playoff loss. Like, if Andy Reid could play <laughs> series, it, like, think about it. If Andy Reid could play three game series, would he not have won like seven Super Bowls by now? Because the guy is so good at adjustments. If, if, if he could see your defense twice in a row, I think that that guy could have gone so far. Un- unfortunately, you know, last week they got taken off guard by a great Indianapolis game plan. I'm going Kansas City. Um, Mahomes is banged up, but I've, I have such a man crush on that guy, I would marry him tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So San Francisco at the Rams. This is and within our picks. The Rams are favored by three and a half. Marcus, what's your pick? Um, I'm taking the Rams at home. I hate three and a half, but um, I think this game is going to be a lot lower scoring than uh, the over/under, which I think is up in the 50 range. Uh, I think it's going to be a little more smash mouth, some big plays, um, but I think it's going to be a really good time to see if uh, the Niners can start coming closer, keeping up that 200 yards a game. Yep. I'm going to take San Francisco. Um, I, I think the only way you can hope to neutralize Aaron Donald is just to run the ball right at him, and that's what they're going to do. 
Uh, Todd Gurley being out is kind of the, def- the or likely being out is kind of the defining measure for me here. So I think I'm going to take San Francisco to at least cover, uh, if not win. Uh, I'm definitely taking San Francisco. Um, I think that, you know, I, I love Kyle Shanahan. I'm, I'm obsessed with the guy. I don't have a lot of faith in Garoppolo, but they got Tevin Coleman coming back. Their defensive front is just all of a sudden looking like this monster force. Like, could, you know. He's enough first for him, so yeah. it shouldn't you, you, be. <laughs> you see Bosa coming into his own, and it was actually pretty much the same exact thing with his brother in the Chargers at the, almost the same point of the season, you know, because he held out and then he came in, and all of a sudden, like, he was such a force going forward. I think we say this, see the same out of Bosa going forward. He's going to put a lot of pressure on a Rams team that is without their starting running back. Uh, this week, and I, I I love San Francisco just because I just I think that they're they found something they found something in their defense and they're getting some of their weapons back on offense. I don't know why San Francisco isn't talked about more for going to grab AB. AB. If they could just go AB settled his lawsuit and like he's it seems he's still fucking crazy, but bring that guy in and just like deal with his bullshit and take take your team to the Super Bowl. That if, if if I'm San Francisco, if I'm John Lynch. I'm bringing AB in, and he's the catalyst that I think could really propel them into the next level. Where are they or, on cap? Uh, I, uh, it, yeah. it, it, it doesn't matter. We'll, so New England we'll, already has them under their cap. You, you, can, al- you can always maneuver. Um, but, yeah, yeah I, 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 w- I would love that move. Like, out of all the moves in the NFL, I think that's one that needs to be made. Yep. Uh, let's go to the Toilet Bowl. The most exciting game of the week by far. Felipe, if you're listening, <laughs> call me. <laughs> Felipe Carvalho, read our article on him. Uh, Dolphins fan here. Uh, Washington and Miami. Miami is a three-and-a-half dog at home. Disrespect for the best team in the NFL. Marcus, what are your thoughts? I'm not even going to watch this game. Um, and I'm, I'm surprised Washington's not going to let Haskins start this game. Um, if you if you want to get his feet wet against a almost not – um, not an NFL team. This is a really good time to do it. Um, but Wash, uh, Miami can't afford to win this game, so uh, Washington wins this one. So that's one of my notes too. Uh, Miami should lose this game, as I mean, like literally, they should lose this game. <laughs> um, they, they need they need a quarterback or offensive line help if they build it the right way and start there. Both. Um, yeah. But coach firings always seem to kind of galvanize the team. So I like Washington to come out strong, look, you know, like almost like a professional team for once. And I, I think they win in Miami. Uh, no home full advantage because they're going to have like 25 people showing up to the game, um, even though the tickets are cheaper than the zoo. <laughs> so I, I love all your points, and I'm actually going to go the other way, though. Uh, and here's why. Because I think, I think Washington is in such a funk. If you read any publication, Washington is just getting railed. Despite the their way, great culture. The way, oh my God. <laughs> the way that they handled the, the Jake Gruden hiring, like, even if you don't like that guy, you have to be embarrassed about everything that they did. I think that any guy that's still existing on that coaching staff, they see what's going on, and the players have seen it. Like, did you see, like, uh, one of the players, I forget who it was, it was um, uh, Thompson. Yeah. Cried yeah, yeah, when, he, yeah. when, he, when he realized, like, like Jake Gruden's just getting real. They released things about fucking something that Jay Gruden did a year ago in order to fire him. Just fire him. Yeah. Who right. gives a shit? Like, they call them in at 5 a.m. Embarrassing. Like, they, they're that's, like a, they're like a middle school pack of girls yeah. that, like, they don't know how to handle so, social situations, and they do the dumbest things. I think that that stigma is going to be enough. Josh Rosen, ultimately, for me, is going to be the X factor in this. I like, I've like. i liked, kind of like what I've seen. I like I think he's, he's making, like, uh, you know, uh, He's making a dish out of the shit that they're they're handing him, and it's been horrible. But what what do you expect of the guy? All he really has is Kenyon Drake. Like that's really his only decent weapon. Uh, no offensive line, but I, I, I like Josh Rosen. I think that he does have a weird chip on his shoulder. Um, I think that ultimately Miami may lose, but maybe they lose by a field goal, and it's going to be one of the worst games of the year. Yeah. Uh, so let's move right on. This is an exciting game for me. Uh, New Orleans at Jacksonville. Jacksonville is favored by one and a half, which is a Bit of a surprise for me, uh, I gotta say, uh, Marcus. Who's your pick and why? Uh, I was originally leaning New Orleans because I, I can't give their defense enough praise, and I was I was about to write it down, and then I saw that Jalen Ramsey's gonna play, and he's an X factor for me. Um, so that for me is a sway. So uh, Minshew mania, and I love how Fournette's running, but uh, with Jalen Ramsey in there, I, th- I think uh, I think Jags take this one. So I'm going to go the other way. Uh, I love Minshew as well. I think he – I'm a big fan, um, but I'm tired of picking against New Orleans and losing, so I'm going to stop doing it. <laughs> Dude, great fucking points, and I'm the same way. I'm going New Orleans because I'm just – I'm getting burned so fucking thoroughly on my New Orleans picks. 
Uh, love Teddy Bridgewater, Gardner Minshew. Uh, let's go have a fucking whiskey sometime, dude. You're <laughs> so fascinating to me. Like we we we've if, if if you follow our page, you know that we're obsessed with the guy. And how could you not be? Um, so I, I I am picking New Orleans. Though I think New Orleans defense is just fucking good. It's yeah. so Insane, weird. They're good. good. I think once Drew Brees comes back, for me, give me New Orleans for the Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, they they are just such an interesting team for me. Um, I think that NFC Championship we might be looking at like Packers New Orleans. Yep. Like I'm really excited about what the NFC Championship has to offer this year. Packers New Orleans, Rams. New Orleans, you know, whatever the mix, the NFC is so interesting. I mean, the Patriots are going to rumble, and they're going to be in the AFC Championship, but the NFC is just wide fucking open right now, and I think with a backup quarterback as good as they look, give me New Orleans. And and Teddy, come back to the Vikings, baby. I love you so much. (laughs) All right, so we're going to do our quick hits. These are the ones that are just not interesting games, so we're just going to drill through. I'm going to do mine last because I fucking suck, and you guys don't want to listen to mine. But uh, let's start out with Marcus. All right, so I... And I'm just going to ride the crazy train. Um, I want Arizona to hold off Atlanta. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm taking taking the, the the Steelers at six and a half. That line is moving, but when we set this one up, um, I'm taking the Steelers to cover six and a half. And then give me the Rams at home over the Niners. All right, baby. I'm going to take Carolina minus two because I don't know what Tampa team is going to show no, no, up. Sorry, sorry, Marcus, just, just uh, complete your picks. Yeah, sorry. And, I uh, thought it was all of them. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going Carolina. I don't I don't think Tampa shuts down uh, Chris McCaffrey twice. And uh, and um, no Cam Newton means that off- offense is a little bit more open. And yep. I like Kyle, Kyle Go Lyle's through and, all your picks and then yeah, go, go through the, all the last one. Okay. You went through Pittsburgh at Pittsburgh. Chargers? Pittsburgh okay. and, yeah. Yes, so I'm, I'm going to take Carolina minus two. Again, I, d- I don't know what Tampa team is going to show up, so I'm going to take the more consistent team. Uh, take Arizona plus the points. Kind of surprised that Atlanta is favored to beat anybody. And uh, Pittsburgh, I think, covers. Um, the Chargers have nine guys on the IR, 11 guys on the injury report. There's not much of a, of a Chargers team left, so I'm going to take the Steelers. Well, good. So don't listen to what I'm about to tell you guys because I, I'm very much against what they just said, uh, and I'm happy about it because i got to gain some edge in this competition. Uh, Carolina at Tampa, going Tampa. Love what Jameis is doing. Um, I think that they recover, and I love Bruce Arians as a coach. At Atlanta at Arizona, give me Arizona all day long. Uh, Marcus sends us our picks weekly, and they actually put Arizona as the favorite in this game, and I still picked Arizona. That, I did too. That, 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 that's that, actually that, funny. I did too. That's how confident I am in Arizona. <laughs> I think that, I think that Atlanta is just dog shit, and this is Dan Quinn's last week if they're if they're smart. Uh, Pittsburgh at, at Chargers, give me the Chargers. Why not? Fucking who the hell is playing quarterback for Pittsburgh? Hodges, baby. All right, guys. So that wraps up our week six podcast again. If you have any feedback for us, uh, please let us know. Uh, we're up to, we are uploading this SoundCloud. We are going to do audio only going forward, which I do think it produces a better product. It allows you to be able to listen to it while you're on the go. Um, we've heard from a lot of friends that that is something important to us. I myself have never once watched a video podcast in my life. I don't know why we were actually doing it. We will bring it back, but we're going to we're gonna put the audio on SoundCloud regardless going forward so that even if we're recording it, you can always upload it uh, from those platforms. And uh, guys, as always, fucking love you guys. You guys got great takes, great points. Um, if you guys like us, let us know. If you hate us, definitely let us know we we fuel from your hatred so um any closing notes marcus uh stillers are gonna win the north they're way better than everyone thinks you're welcome um and um i hate new england right yeah i would say just just follow us on other pages uh we're doing other videos youtube or other channels uh look out for us and as we can you know continue to grow this thing and, and, and really appreciate you guys growing with us Great points, and, and honestly, uh, guys, if you like us, like help us out. Like if you, especially if you followed us this far into this in this podcast into our rambling, like clearly you like what we're doing. If you're in the fortieth um, minute, yeah, you appreciate us. Help us out <laughs> because we're we're really trying to build something here. I, I hope everyone can see that. Uh, go follow us on YouTube. Um, we're about to unleash our stuff on SoundCloud, so I want you to follow us on whatever your preferred platform platform is, and please help us out. Like, if, if you like what we're doing, this is what we're doing while we're doing our other shit. We'd love to, for this to be our, our only job. So, and, uh, please help us out. And, you know, feel free to interact. We definitely like getting inboxes, comments, um, feedback. Suggest some topics. If there's yeah. something you want to hear us cover. If you haven't seen, we are extremely responsive. If, you've, if you comment, we're probably replying on it. And, and, and by the way, like, even if we get big, 
Uh, we're growing we're growing at a very good rate right now but even when we get big we promise that we're going to constantly deliver that we're not going to be this you know exclusionary page that just like ignores comments like when it gets too big we're probably not gonna be able to get to all of them but i swear we will always make an effort to respond to you guys because you are what we are in the end you're our community uh you're our following base and we do this for you so uh let us know what we can do better please for the love of god <laughs> and uh and 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 please pray for me because my picks are doing horrible right now <laughs> so guys uh this wraps up week six i love you all um marcus hopefully you know you you shoot a text over to goose i think that you guys have a lot of stuff to talk about after this pod Derek, i really have always pictured you with trevor i think it's a beautiful <laughs> fit and uh pylon you know i've always loved you baby so <laughs> let's uh let's get together this wraps up week six thank you so much have a great week